Welcome back, everybody just relaxing for now. Uh, that's the famous hotel uh, at the corner of the Hairpin Turn 6 as we bring you our Trans Am Series presented by Pirelli live from Sebring International Raceway. It's a beautiful day here in Florida. It is almost time to do some sunbathing as we look down the main straight and getting ready for what will be our next big feature race, which is of course TA and our SGT class. And as you can see, they are ready to go. So as they get ready to go out, let's just have a think about what we just saw because we just saw some fantastic TA2 racing. Let's take a look at how it all panned out. So I'm gonna go from Ernie to Tommy to you, okay, but okay. because of the sun, I'd like to Great action right from the get-go as Rafa Matos in the yellow 88 led Thomas Merrill. But Merrill would go off at turn three just as he did last year, but this time on the first lap. Mike Skeen looking really good for a podium and he would get that. But Matos, who led literally all of the race, would then get overtaken by Merrill in the final quarter. And look at this, neck and neck. Who was it gonna be coming out of sunset? Well, the sun was shining on Thomas Merrill because he took victory over Rafa Matos with Mike Skeen taking third place. So that's the place to be on that deck chair, I think. They've got the perfect view there of proceedings here at Sebring. So our qualifying for TA, SGT and GT was really interesting and there's plenty of great stories to talk about. And there's no question that Ernie Francis Jr. will have his tail up and he is ready to go. But the calm before the storm, if you will, here at Sebring in the 12 hours is just a few weeks away. And so this is the perfect warm up in many ways. Yep, it's tank tops on What's because it's uh, nope. nice and hot down there. That's uh, Burton's, nice. I guess. Now, as I just mentioned, these guys were in action yesterday afternoon during qualifying and everybody vying for pole position. As we will take you back now to yesterday afternoon and decide how they decided where they would start, starting with S. So let's take a look back at the highlights of our SGT Championship. It was a good series in perfect conditions. And James Candelera taking his one top lap of 213.6 to take fourth place overall. But the others went out early. Aaron Pierce setting a third quickest, a 213.5. Uh, but the front row was our champion, Lee Saunders in the Dodge Viper, doing a really good job, but he couldn't quite pit the man of the moment, and that was Justin Oakes. On his second lap, Justin setting a 209.878, a brilliant, brilliant run in the Corvette to take pole position, and his new baby boy Jackson will be delighted. Chris Dyson was out for pole position, but he had a spin to Chris Dyson in the number 20, and that didn't help things, so that put him behind the eight ball for a while, but he still got the fourth fastest time. Adam Andretti, just off the front row in the 43, in the same colors as last year, John Andretti colors for his brother. And then Tom Idri, Tom Idrisi getting second place overall. On the radio, as always, is the way with Tom Idrisi but the number eight taking a provisional front row start. And Ernie Francis Jr., well, what can you say about this man? Ernie Francis Jr., again, in brilliant form, getting the fastest lap of the qualifying session. He is the lap record holder, but Ernie Francis Jr. did it again in style. So that's how they fared in qualifying. That sets us up nicely for our race ahead, but there's no better way than to get us really in the mood to go racing 
is to go down to the grid itself, or the pre-grid, I should say, and join Ben Sissel to take us around the cars that are about to show us off and race here at Sebring. Well, there's no better place to start at the grid than with the champ. Ernie, here we are at Sebring. You told us earlier in an interview that you wanted to get a couple of tenths faster and break your record. Sure enough, here you did. How in the world did you do it? Uh, yeah, we knew we had a fast car when we unloaded off the trailer. Uh, car had some pace to it. It's been running perfect all weekend. Uh, we just needed to throw a new set of tires on it and go out there and just lay one down. Uh, we knew we had the pace in the car. And then qualifying, everything just kind of lined up for us. Uh, laid down a lap what we thought was good enough to, uh, to get the pole. And it was, and uh, turned out to be a new uh, track record for us also. Uh, really happy about it. Uh, really happy about the way the car is now. Uh, the new look uh, with Future Star Racing, Wings and Wheels Foundation uh, on board this year. Uh, super excited for it and uh, can't wait to get out there and race. I'm so proud of Ernie Francis Jr. in the 2021 season. Great things are happening. He's with Future Star Racing. He's gonna be racing in Formula Regional Americas. He's gonna be racing in the SRX season and going for his eighth championship. But with that, all your other competitors, look back at your competitors, they're chopping at the bit because they've all said, Ernie's gonna be distracted this year. What do you say to them? Yeah, I think uh, I'm up for the challenge. I'm ready for it and uh, we'll see what happens out there on track. Nice. Always, Ernie always ends everything with, we'll see what happens out there on track. I'm gonna come over here to Tommy Dreesen. Let's go around the front. The Lucas Slick Mist came in second place. It came down to, he's getting blown away by his mask. I got so much to talk to him. Tommy, let's get in front of your beautiful car with Burton Racing. Tommy, I just, I just kind of laid down the gauntlet that Ernie's racing in three series, running for three championships. He's a little distracted. You were so close last year. How are you going to close in on him this year? Well, you know, I think that towards the end of the year, we started catching up. So I think now we can, like, go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Ernie. He's a, he's a heck of a competitor. Um, the distractions, I don't think it's what he does for a living, you know, and... Uh, I just think he's going to be, whatever track he's on, he focuses where he is. I got to do the same thing. And uh, just happy to be able to be up here on the front row. We were a little upset yesterday, so I want to say sorry, because I didn't realize during qualifying, you people were listening to me. So apologies for the, uh, for the language, but uh, I'll try to do better. But I get pretty hot and heavy in there and I uh, get excited. So uh, bear with me and I'll get better and better every race, but we're going to be faster and faster every race. Well, the beauty of the live streaming is we kind of now get to run by our own rules, so no apologies necessary. But I do want to point out something. If you're a sunglass manufacturer, help oh. a buddy out. Show them. Yeah. Show Tony your sun. Yeah, Zip tied. Out. This is like my fifth season with these things, and every time they fix them, I go, well, I'm, I still got a couple of good, couple of good, good seasons on this. But uh, hey, Ray-Ban, Gucci, uh, if, you want a, uh, if you want a spokesperson, I'm right here. And uh, so happy. Thank you, uh, Burton Racing. They worked so hard. And thank you to the Lucas Oil family. Lucas Oil Slick Miss. Uh, just happy to be here, and I'm going to fight real hard for everybody. Hope you put on a good show. Nice. All right, Tony, hold on. I'm going to talk smack. Look at this, Tommy. Adam Andretti, look at that sexy beast right there, just posing aye, aye, aye. like a catalog model, just calling you in. I want to talk to the camera. Look at this specimen of a man. You did good here last year, had bad luck near the end. Beautiful car, so happy to have you back. How in the world are you going to pass our first and second in points last year? You know, it's um, it's a long 100 miles, so you can't all do it down there in turn one. I know that, and I know they both know that, so we're going to give it our best effort and, um, and, and keeping them pushing their cars to their limits over the 100 miles, so hopefully we can work on their deterioration a bit. But that's kind of been my plan sitting right here, and we ought to, we got a really strong Really strong tribute car here with my brother John and, and you know my father's on the car riding with us. So I've got some added strengths there. Uh, ECC Engineer Components Company, a Anchor Bolt and Screw, and this whole group. You know, I got the right, right ingredients to make a good cake here. Nice. I love it. Adam Andretti, we'll see you out there. Do we have time to talk to Simon? Want, want to talk to Simon Gregg real quick because this is new car, new livery, new team. And he's running in honor of his father, the Peter Gregg Foundation. Simon, I've read the press releases. It sounds so awesome. Everybody talks about we're taking the vocational trades out of schools. And you now have a scholarship just for that. Yeah, we're looking forward to attracting, educating, and training young, uh, young technicians, mechanics for the sports car industry. Uh, we're going to have a, um, 
we're going to build a 944 turbo for club racing and then auction it off for the benefit of the foundation. So I'm looking forward to you know, giving something back to the sport to help the unsung heroes. Nice, the unsung heroes. You can go to the PeterGregFoundation.org for more information. We have to move to SDT. Justin Marks, I'm sorry, but we saw Justin Marks. Justin, raise your hand. We saw him with Pitbull at Daytona last week, and here he is this weekend running Coca-Cola. Justin, so excited to have you back in Trans Am. Are you excited? Yeah, these cars are great. I love driving these race cars. Some of the, my favorite that I've ever driven in my career, so if I get a little bit of time to do it, uh, take advantage of it. So um, with the NASCAR you know, bubble, it's hard for me to go into the races. So uh, those guys have got things under control over at Daytona, and I'm here having some fun with these uh, Ave Motorsports guys. Nice. I love it. Justin Marks, also one of the owners of the Music City Grand Prix that we're going to be at in August, the race that everybody's looking forward to. Justin Marks, good luck. We will see if Coke is it today at Sebring. Amy Ruman, McNichols, number 23, Chevrolet Corvette. Amy Ruman, we love you. Welcome back. David Penteric back with this Crider Racing. Look at this beautiful Captain America paint scheme right here. We always talk a lot about the camaraderie as we walk down to SGT. Poncho Weaver is borrowing an engine from ECC Motorsports for Ken Twaits in his first TA outing right here. So Poncho Weaver, good stuff. Way to, they hustled all night last night, replaced the engine from a competitor. He's going to trade it out. So that's just part of the camaraderie, isn't it, Poncho? Thank goodness for the Andretti Group and ECC uh, loaned us one of their top brand new engines to make sure that Ken had a good ride today. We're thankful for that. Nice. Ken Twaits, you're my hero. Have fun out there, buddy. Awesome. Richard Grant out here with us in TA at Sebring. Richard Grant, so glad to have you here. Now we're going to Justin Oaks right here in the Drone Works G Speed Corvette. Justin is running last year with us. Tony, if you don't mind, I'm going to get a few comments from him. Justin, green flag drops. Is it true that we're not doing a split start today? That's right. We're all together with the TA cars. This should be pretty wild. I'm starting with the uh, orange Dodge behind me right here to my side. So yeah, we're all together in one big group. It should be interesting. Nice. Should be interesting, Tony, is an understatement. I've never seen a Trans Am race where we don't split the start between the TA and the SGT group. So here's a TA car behind them and Jeff Hinkle. Then Lee Saunders, last year's champion. We'll try to walk down the line as long as they, they give us the time to do it. Unbelievable stuff here. Got Pierce here, should be. Aaron Pierce right here, back in SGT. Sometimes he's with us in TA2. So glad to have him back. Candelaria had a little bit of an off yesterday. Adrian, your baby. How's it feel to see your baby out there under the hands of somebody else? No, it's, uh, it's okay. Um, he's learning the car. We had limited practice. Practice got rained out on, um, on Friday. So uh, he went into qualifying, a lot of pressure, new car. Um, just a little slip up there. We fixed it. I think he's ready to run today. He qualified well, so uh, I told him to be consistent, and uh, he'll pick off the positions as he's going. Nice. So for those of you that are wondering, this was Adrian's car last year. He got second in place, the, the tightest race. I got to go. So we pause for a moment while the national anthem is played.
So a fantastic rendition there of our national anthem, beautifully sung. And as the wind picks up quite dramatically here at Sebring, it could be a weather factor too. And I don't want to make too much drama out of it, but there are clouds gathering in the distance and that wind is picking up. It's been strong, actually. It was strong in the TA2 race, but it's going to be even stronger. A crosswind certainly coming up that Ullman Strait is really going to hit them. And when they come into turn one as well. So uh, it's going to be really interesting, this race. And as you can see, plenty of good stories. Ben giving us all the intros and uh, letting us know exactly what Ernie Francis's frame of mind yeah, is, having set that pole there. position and the lap record. About to get out, and they are about to go out, uh, but it really is picking up. And in fact, like I said, the wind is blowing across the circuit. So, in other words, if you're looking at this shot, which is our turn one, the wind is blowing from turn one down the front straight uh, into the faces or into the car faces uh, of the cars coming in. So, it's going to be uh, a real change of direction into turn one and right, quite breezy, especially in that first lap with a lot of uh, upset air. Uh, there could be some shenanigans as we'll have onboard pictures from David Pintarik. Well, the Crider Racing team will be watching what he gets up to. And hopefully, if the wind is not too tough, and uh, Logano, our pilot, doing a heck of a job in these winds, as we, Terry gives us the one minute board. But you can see the wind for yourself on the flags. It's uh, pretty heavy. I wonder if the drivers will complain about that afterwards, or have something to say about that, at least. So, they fire up the engines here at Sebring, and what a glorious sound it is. It's a brand new season of Trans Am, and the TA cars plus the SGT and GT cars are on track and ready to go. Can Adam Andretti do something special in his brother painted 43? And if you don't know who his brother is, John Andretti sadly passed away last year, and so out of remembrance to him, Adam is running his colors and the 43 car so we're looking forward to that we've got a great insight into what it's like to race here at sebring from adam and really looking forward to this race i think this is going to be just as exciting and interesting as the previous race the simple reason that we've got so many competitive cars out here we've hardly mentioned amy Ruman. she has uh, not yet been a back she's there Red 23, the biggest car. There's the first car of Tommy Dreese. And as a special treat, we might try to see if we can get a hold of Tommy and uh, have a word before he goes racing. There's the Honda coming out to lead them through the procession from turn one. And like I said, the wind is coming from the direction you're looking at and going down that front straight. So that's going to make things interesting as you bounce out of uh, Sunset and hit that wind heavily. Plus, you'll have a tailwind down the Ullman straight coming out of 16 and into 17, which should make it very interesting indeed. Now, I'm going to try something here. We never know whether it's going to work. This is live. We're having fun. Let's see if we can talk to the rock and roll. Tommy Dreesey, this is Jonathan Green in commentary. Do you copy? Jonathan Green in commentary. Do you copy? I got you, buddy. I got you, buddy. Okay, take me through it. What are you going to do from the get-go? You got me? You got me? Oh, I got you, Tommy. Tell me what you're going to do All for right, this race. Tommy, tell me what you're going to do for this race. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to push Ernie. I gotta, we got to get through the first couple of corners, and then we're going to work. If I'm in the lead, second or third, that's okay. we got a hundred miles to go to work. If I come out, I'm just going to put the pressure on anybody who's in front of me. Tommy, give the fans an idea of just Tommy, how physical this circuit is. Give the fans an idea of just how physical this circuit is. This is a very physical circuit. It, may, it beats you up, man. But, um, uh, man, these fans and cars are monsters here. We're going so fast, we broke it to the... We broke the top two minutes yesterday, early at night. I mean, we're flying through here. What a great historic track. Seabree, let's go win this thing. Let's go win this thing. I've got a swear jar Let's here in the commentary room, so I'll be watching you, Tommy. Best of luck, my friend. Thank you very much. Thanks, Lucas. Always thanks, buddy. Thanks, Lucas. 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 Thanks,
gonna be pushing hard and racing hard for all of you. Great words there from Tommy Dreesey there, giving us an inside live look of what it's like to be in a race car with the mighty Rockin' Moroccan, and he is such a great character. And he lines up right behind Ernie Francis Jr., but he's gonna have a lot on his plate because he knows Adam Andretti doesn't wanna stay in third in the all blue behind him. And then there are a host of other cars right there, including, well, I was gonna say including Chris Dyson, but he's not. Chris Dyson, actually, that's the big news story, has decided to take new tires, and here he is, we're on board with him here, and he will start at the back of this race. So watch out for Chris Dyson to come through the pack, and we'll have our V-Box on board with him, in the number 20 plaid car, because that can make things really interesting indeed. He's got brand new set of uh, bags on that car, and he could push hard. Now this was a, a really kind of strategic decision, but we saw in TA2, the only needs one safety car, and Chris could be right on it. We saw Thomas Merrill spin out and come good. So let's see if uh, Chris Dyson could do that. We'll also be on board with the Ford Mustang on the number 57 of David Pintarek. And that could make for some interesting watching as well. And as you can see, the Honda making his way down the Ullman Strait. And the wind now coming towards you here. So they'll have a tailwind at their backs. And I keep mentioning the wind simply because it's so strong out there. And I'm going to try to see if I can get Ben in here again. And how, how big, how bad is the weather? It's windy, and you don't want to come across these long straightaways. And it's a crosswind to some of these straightaways. And it, it's going to be a headwind for the front straight. So it's going to really affect the drivers and, and their setups a little bit. Well, here we go then. They're going to come straight into a full-on headwind as we go for the start of this race, which could affect all sorts of aerodynamics. As we get ready to go racing, on the left-hand side, Tommy Dreesey doesn't get away well, but uh, Adam Andretti did get away well, and straight to the first corner. So too did Amy Ruman on the left-hand side of your screen. Here comes Andretti, though. Andretti side by side with Ernie Francis Jr. for a moment, but the 43 slots into second place. Great start. And back to third goes... Tommy Dreesey's, we go back on board with Tommy as they're locking up there. And, oh, that was actually, I think, our France that locked up through three. But a good clean start, 27 laps, 75 minutes. And we're going to have a front row seat here with Tommy as he comes under the bridge and down towards Big Ben for the first time. Let's watch the speed that he carries through here. Down there, you let the car kind of drift out. Justin Oakes is kind of looking inside a little bit too. Yeah, good clean start. That's what we wanted. And really... Really good start from Amy Ruman. Uh -oh. There goes uh, Ken Thwaites. Here, Here comes Lee Saunders on Justin Oakes. They are battling for the SGT Championship. Oakes just holding him off for now. And I saw Chris Dyson had picked up a lot of spaces as we're on board with David Pinterek in his new Kreider racing car with Ave Motorsports. Out of 10 they come then for the first lap into 11 and 12 coming up. And now the composure with Ernie having locked up a little bit out of three calmed it down and he's back and running great start from Amy Ruman there's Ken Waits in his first race in the Poncho Weaver prepared car there's the SGT challenge and Dyson is already making his way through great start from Dyson really good start Dyson has quite a few miles here in all kinds of different mixed group races he knows all the secrets David Pinteric looking hot hoping for something here at a good start to 2021 He's had good finishes here in the past. Now, like I said, they've got that tailwind on them now coming down the Almond Strait, and it is going to be Ernie Francis Jr. diving into Sunset Ben. Good start also from Justin Marks. He's there in fourth position. There's Ken Thwaites. Thwaites in sixth place. Panteric behind him. Look out, Chris Dyson is coming through. Dyson really on the charge. Great start by him. And we're on board with Dyson as he comes onto the main straight again. It looks as though he's going to have an overtake there, nicely done. And Dyson is up to eighth position already, getting past Richard Grant just then. But what a run that is in the first lap. That really is. Chris Dyson, that's impressive. To be able to pass that many cars, such a different field all the way through. And now he's hunting down Ken Twaits in that Poncho Weaver Challenger. Well, we know that Poncho Weaver car is going to be fast, but Ken in his first run out. Look at this for the lead as Adam Andretti has reeled in Ernie Francis Jr. as they head down towards the hairpin. 
Outside, but and Justin Marks is in the catbird seat right there. Well, Andretti's going to try and go high and wide. He cuts back in now, but he's lost that. He's lost to Justin Marks. The Coca-Cola car goes through. And Tommy Dreese. Well, Tommy Dreese's lost uh, sight of the leaders just outside of there. Look at this all going on here. But Justin Marks, look at him moving up. He's also Daniel Suarez's his owner with Pitt at Daytona last time, but he's like, hey, Daytona has a bubble, I'm gonna come racing. So here he is in that beautiful Coca-Cola Corvette out here racing with us. So, so happy to have Justin Marks in the TA Series, and I believe he's gonna be running for a 2021 championship. Well, you can imagine that Daniel Suarez will be watching on to see how the boss gets on, because uh, he talks about it, but can he do it? <laughs> yeah. Yes, he can, is the answer. On board with Dreesy again. He's lost quite a lot of time as Tommy. But he's still in the hunt. Oh, in comes uh, James Candelera. Now, he had problems in qualifying, and uh, that is not good. No, it's not. That's really unfortunate for the fast auto team, but I'm sure they're going to get him fixed and back out on the track. As Adam. There he is. Look at that. Ernie is just taking off. So yeah. Tommy Dreesy's in second, but Look Ernie's this, gone. Look at this. Look at this man coming through in the 20. Really good. He's just got past David Panteric who was six at the time. So as he comes across the line, the number 20 of Chris Dyson is on a run for sure here at Sebring. Let's take a look at his time. He crosses the line now. Dyson does a 2.04 in that last lap, and he's up already to sixth place. And now Amy Ruman is in his sights. So an electric start to this one, just what we want. Back with David Panteric. He just got overtaken by Chris Dyson. Panteric in, what, seventh place? Yeah, so happy to have David Panteric back in the series. I think he's going to be running the whole 2021 series. Beautiful car. So, David, thank you for joining us. Love having you out here. Well, there's Amy Rubin. Let's have a look how far Chris Dyson off. Well, visually, you can see uh, he's quite a, quite some way, but it's only a matter of lap what kind of pace he's on at the moment. Last lap from Amy Rubin was at 2.06. Dyson was two seconds quicker than her. So. Yeah, Dyson but is definitely running hard. Ken Twaits is staying right there with David Panteric. So, Ken Twaits, it's funny. We've got uh, Ken Twaits and Justin Marks, both from Brentwood, Tennessee, joining us right now. Yeah, I think Ken Twaits, once he gets to his grips, uh, gets to grips with the TA car, I think he's going to be a real factor. Now, how well can Justin Oaks do? I don't know. Justin Oaks has had some really good showings here with us in this TA class. And he seems to be kind of like a chess player. And uh, he's going to do everything he can to distract Tommy and his mirrors and, and dive bomb in under there and make a good pass. But look at this. This is going to well, be the championship. I was about with Justin Oates. This is going to be the champ. Oh, Justin Oaks. Sorry. Yeah. yeah, this is going to be the championship in SGT right here. Well, I Lee think. Saunders has got ahead of Oaks, who'd led early on. So these two going at it in SGT, just what we wanted to see. Justin Marks, on the other hand, is all over Tommy Dreesey. And that's going to get very interesting. Now, here's the gap we're looking for. There is Amy Ruman in the all red. There in the all white is Chris Dyson. Pataric with Thwaites. Ken Thwaites right behind him. We've got, what, five battles here for overtaking positions. Meanwhile, Richard Grant goes through a little further back. Here is that battle for SGT, and they're going through traffic. And they pass. Justin Oaks and Jeff Hinkle, two different classes right there. Yep. So onto the main straight, and it's the SGT class. Lee Saunders in the Viper, the red and black, right in the middle of your picture, and behind him, Justin Oaks. Yeah, but can Jeff Hinkle get by Lee he Saunders has. before turn one? Nope. So now he's going to play kind of a pick for Lee Saunders, giving Lee Saunders an advantage. Not Unless Justin one. get by. Yeah, nice. Justin's passed in the Corvette. Nicely done. Now, look at Adam Andretti all over Justin Marks. And Adam Andretti hitting his marks at the moment. Really nicely done. As we go back on board with Tommy Dreesy. Dreesy in second place, but losing ground to Ernie Francis Jr. Gap 4.8 seconds. Great overhead shots from our drone. Through the trees and dancing their way around the back end of the circuit into tower. Corner, as we've mentioned before. Adam Andretti giving us a real insight, and he said that's one of the most important corners. And look at the drive he got out of there as he heads down towards Bishop. And Adam Andretti surely lining himself up for an overtake here as they come into the Le Mans complex. 
And he's going to surely make a run down the Almond Straight for a pass here on Justin Marks. Adam Andretti's always been really good at getting back on the gas at the most opportune time out of a corner. Lee Saunders, Justin Oaks. Lee Saunders in that big Mopar V10. But Justin Oaks has really given him a handful in that mirror. And here comes Andretti. And Adam, oh, he does, goes down the inside. Well, he saw how Merrill did it. He watched and learned, and now he's taken the advice. And that's a beautiful move by Adam Andretti to go into third place. Now he's got Dreesy in his sights. Down the front straight they come. Andretti back up to third where he started. And Justin Marks can do nothing about it for now. And through goes the 99, the Coca-Cola sponsored car, losing out of spot. Here comes Lee Saunders. And Justin Oaks yet again, down the back straight. Hinkle looking to get past both of them. He's, of course, in a different class. That's a pretty car. Yeah, very much so. And Lee Saunders doing everything. And, of course, this is his home race. He's from Florida, our current champion of SGT. He sighed with relief when Lostowski disappeared. But now he's got Justin Oaks to deal with. Yeah, Justin Oaks is running for the 2021 championship, but he might have to miss a race or two because his wife is expecting their first baby named Jackson coming here in April. Didn't seem to stop him yesterday, and I didn't seem to stop him this weekend, so I think he'll be around. Racing for Jackson. I love it. So a long way to go in this one, and Chris, I thought Chris Dyson was sort of depending on the potential of a safety car. He doesn't need it. Dyson already up to fifth place. Good to see Lou Gigliotti uh, involved in the racing. Look at this. SGT side by side. Fantastic racing. As through goes Justin Oaks back into the lead of SGT. And there's Philip De Pippo. Philip, the only GT, GT yeah. driver, I think, out here with us. But he's been racing with us in TA2 in the past. So it's a beautiful Sasco car out here. Thank you so much, Philip, for coming out. Look at that. Ernie's got a huge lead. Yeah, massive lead. And there you see it. First just going through. Second. Here's third. Then Marks seconds. in fourth. And there is your fifth place man, Chris Dyson, who really now will sniff the opportunity to get amongst it in this race. And it's a long way to go yet as we go on board with the mighty Chris Dyson. Look at that line. Look at that. It's really rare to see somebody uh, move their hands that little around turn 17. I think Chris Dyson is in a rhythm. You better watch out, Ernie Francis Jr. That's a really good driving right there. Yeah, well, Ernie Francis Jr. took the lap record and proved on his own lap record from the previous year. But Dyson, absolutely. Look at the bottom left hand of your screen. You can try to look both ways, which is out the window, out the windscreen. But also, like you say, watch his hands as he changes the gears but how smooth he is. Oh, Sadly, no. Crider Racing's David Pintarek is in. And he was going well, he was pedaling good. But uh, there is something definitely major wrong with that. Because it's going nowhere. Yeah, it's not a good sign when the hood is off and no. the crew is just standing around. Yeah, exactly. Almost wondering what to do, but yeah. uh, they're putting it back as though they can't find anything. And it's either one of two things, they're gonna send him back out or they're gonna send him home. That's rather unfortunate for David Pinterest. We're so excited to have him back in the series. Such a good looking car, but here we are with Dreesy. Great talking to Tommy before the start of the race, as always. The affable Trans Am West Coast champion. And got a great victory at Brainerd last year. Did Tommy loves his racing, based in Hollywood. He's part of the movie industry. And he often gets sponsored by some of the movies that are distributed because that's what his company does. I think they're showing the white flag somewhere. Well, is that I, is white that, or yellow? I is that tell. surrender or is that, yeah. is that the last lap? I don't think it's either. No, white flag uh, in Trans Am usually means last lap, but in sports car racing usually it means a slower car. But it might have been yellow. I couldn't tell with the light. Yeah, it could well have been Local that yellow uh, parked car that was there. Adam Andretti still fighting hard now with... Tommy Dreesy because he's caught right up to him as Andretti and now the race is on between these two great veterans of TA and Trans Am Racing. And of course our hearts go out to Adam, lost his father Aldo 
earlier this year and of course he's racing on behalf or at least in honor of his brother John who also succumbed to colon cancer last year and so it's an emotional weekend a roller coaster weekend uh, but the Andretti's history here uh, well it's second to none it was interesting off camera Adam telling me a story about the 1970 12 hour here that we mentioned earlier and evidently Sam Posey, who was in that race, said that uh, that was one of the greatest races he'd ever seen Mario put on. Just heard that the number 86 is in pit lane. That should be John Bauckham, new to SGT. He raced with us in GT at Road Atlanta, and we know him as a TA racer. Yeah. So I hope that's not terminal. But look at this. Yeah. Chris Dyson right up there on Justin Marks now. Yeah, and he's caught, he's really reeled him in. He's the fisherman from Florida right now is the man from Lime Rock. And hopefully you'll get a chance to race at Lime Rock this year. Yeah, he had such a great show in there in 2019. Just yes. No, but he was unstoppable. It was unbelievable. And you can tell that Mark, by the squeal under those wheels, is feeling the pressure because here comes Dyson. Man, that thing's a missile right now. It sure is. And Justin Mark's rear end looks really loose right there coming through Bishop's Bend. Well, I've heard of Dyson hoovering things up, but uh, this is incredible. I like that one. That you like a that good one? one yes. okay, okay. Now, oh. here's Tommy and Adam Andretti is literally stuck to his rear bumper, isn't he? Yeah. It's really good stuff. Look at this, ladies and gentlemen. Best of Trans Am, the big three up front. Ford, Chevy, Dodge battling for first, second, and third. Yeah, JJ O'Malley wrote the script earlier this morning, and they are hitting their marks. It's like a beautiful Shakespeare play. JJ O'Malley, of course, joined me in commentary yesterday, our current historian and uh, of the Trans Am series. So uh, always giving us a little bit of insight into history. Of course, Trans Am started right here some 55 years ago, and we're still going strong. The only consistently running and most dynamic road racing series in the US of A, and it's because of people like this man, Chris Dyson. Now, has he lost marks, or has he passed marks? He's passed marks. He's up to four. Yeah, yeah, he's passed them. Brilliant. Now, Dreesy doing a really good job. You know, we talk about the fact that he is quite a character, but he's really good under pressure, actually, Tommy, when he's racing. Uh, yes, he's verbal. Yes, he gets uh, animated, but his driving is second to none. He doesn't force errors. Uh, doesn't sorry he, he isn't forced into errors easily and Andretti try as he might to sort of spook him won't find it easy against Greasy. Stand the back straight they come. This down. is just working out for Ernie though. Oh yeah. Because this battle's gonna slow down Dreesy and Adam a little bit. Ernie's just playing out here like he rented the track. <laughs> maybe, maybe he did. You know as we go back with Chris Dyson, I'm look at the gap he's got between himself and uh, Andretti. But this has been a fantastic display so far. Here comes your leader. There's your second place. And we'll look there. The distance is Chris Dyson. So it may not look like a close battle yet, but with eight of the 27 gone, there's so much time left. And there's a chance of a safety car or something else. But uh, I feel for Justin Marks, he's really been handed it by Dyson in that last overtake because he's pulled away dramatically in the last lap or so. There's Amy Ruman. Justin Marks, uh, he's kind of new to the TA series, but I know of his talent. Saw him win at Mid-Ohio in some of the worst conditions I've ever seen a road race in. Uh, he's he's racing all kinds of different series. He'll be at the top. Here's a replay of an overtake by Dyson. And that was on Justin Marks, and he made it stick right through Sunset. Classic overtake on the inside. Beautifully done by Chris Dyson. Really is. Chris Dyson is dialed in at turn 17 as we look at Ken Twaits, new to the TA series. You know, interestingly enough, we talk about Poncho Weaver, and often when you say Poncho Weaver, the next sentence is Boris said. And then I look through the press release, and lo and behold, Ken Thwaites has been taking lessons about driving a Dodge from one Boris said. And so Ken is in good hands. 
He's got Poncho to make the car. He's got Forrest to teach him to drive it. And he's coming to good full fruition, I think. Yeah, he looks great out there. Oscar Turan right behind him with Breathless Racing. You know, Welcome I've, him to the uh, to the series. I've got Tommy's radio here. I'm almost tempted to turn it on again because I'm sure it'll be interesting to hear. Yes, it would. Well, I'll, I'll let you have a go at that if you want. <laughs> But uh, we're on board with Tommy, but I think he's just uh, concentrating on driving at the moment. As he hits his mark perfectly Look at his hands. on the exit of 16. Through the gearbox. Let's watch Four his gear. speed here. 150. 60. 70. 70. Oh, Almost 179. Beautifully done. Oh, oh, no. Simon Gregg. And the 59 or the SG, whichever you prefer. SG, of course, for Simon Gregg. 59, his regular number. So something wrong there, but uh, they're unstrapping him by the looks of things, or they're not going to send him back out. Oh, maybe, I don't know. What are your thoughts? I don't, I can't really tell. Uh, it's not like they're looking for something mechanical. It's almost yeah. as though they were making an adjustment of some sort uh, to the inside of his... Uh, race seat. So it's Francis Jr., Dreesy, Andretti, Dyson, Marks. Ten laps gone of the 27. Still a lot of racing to come from this. Saunders and Justin Oakes still battling it out in SGT. And there is the Dago Club car of Ken Twaits, our SGT champion from last year. Uh, sorry, excuse me, our XGT champion yeah. from last year. Uh oh. Did Tehran come in or did he hit the wall? Tehran was right behind him. That's a good point. Nicely spotted. Look at the sparks flying off that. Beautiful yeah. pictures. Nice camera work there to show us those sparks coming off Ken Twaits. Oh. Yeah. Man, I am proud of my buddy Ken Twaits. Seventh in TA, He's first doing, time out. I tell you, a top 10, he'll be delighted with that. Really delighted. And to Pippo, the GT man in 18th overall, but leading in GT. I always say this, but there'll be a twist of some sort before the end of this race. You really, that car of Twaits really pops out. Just looked out the window down towards the hairpin and <laughs> it flashes by. Yeah. Can't miss it, can you? No. Really good stuff. And there he is hitting the, hay at the hairpin. That uh, dirt on the exit of the hairpin, I don't know how the 12 hour boys deal with it, but we saw it in Daytona in the bus stop a couple of weeks ago with NASCAR. And once you start throwing up the dirt, you know, you really do uh, create oh, a situation. Oh, there he is. Oh, no. So Oscar. Oscar Turan had to come in after Ken Twaits. Got like, got like a water leak oh, right there yes. in the radiator hose. The radiator's gone bang. Oh, put on gloves, dude. Yeah, you're going to say that's going <laughs> to you can make a cup of tea out of the heat coming out of that. Yeah. That's hot. Ah, talking of hot, here comes Andretti. Andretti on the outside of turn one. Can't quite pull it off. It's going to have to go high and wide. The next overtake is a possible at three. Here they come. Defending is Dreesy. We're on board. Oh, Dreesy's. Sounded like he might have a problem. He's stuck in second. Yeah, Dreesy's he's got a problem. Shifting. Oh, he's there shifted he's now, it. but he was not going as quick as usual no. through there, unless unless my eyes deceive me. No, no I he's think back he was. Speed. I think he was stuck in a gear. He does have a sequential gearbox, and and but at that point, there's no place for Adam to go. Good point. Yeah. Well, Adam will have another chance at it now, but he Ooh. just gets a wiggle on out of the hairpin, but he's got the uh, hurry up head on, that's for sure. And high above, you can see the gap between them and the traffic involved as they come into 10. And that's a graphic illustration of how traffic can play a part here at Sebring as they go into 10. Yeah, it sure is. It's doing that with Dyson too back there with Steven Davison. But they were able to maneuver through, thanks Philip the Pippo. He's racing his own race. Yeah, pretty much. Into tower. That's a beautiful green Mustang that he's racing, though. Yeah, you don't Look at that. see a, paint, a green painted Mustang. I uh, know, that is cool. Aaron Pierce right there in front of. Yep. Aaron Pierce gives him the outside. Executes that well. And now Dreesy needs to turn these next couple of laps into something spectacular. Otherwise, he's going to be in trouble himself. Yeah, I think Adam wants Dreesy at turn one. Yeah. Well, and. and after his textbook overtake on the inside. You've got to think that Adam saw that, made a note of it in TA2 and said, aha, I might try that. It's not close enough, I don't think. No, not this time. 
No, but there's traffic right ahead of them that might hurt turn one, two, and three. Spectacular racing in TA and SGT. That's and Ernie. GT. Ernie's slowing down. What? Hang on, I'm going to check the times here. Ernie Francis Jr., last lap, 204.2. Well, yeah. that's interesting you say that because he's not any slow. He's not any slower than he was. Then they're speeding up. They're speeding up, yeah. Or maybe just lap traffic. That, I think that's probably more likely, yeah. But, but that's the closest they've been yeah. since lap two. I think it's more to do with the fact that Dreesy stays in second gear all the way through here. And maybe he gets good talk out of here, and he does. Up to third, under the bridge, fourth. And then down. Here comes Ernie now. There's the gap. First coming through to the hairpin. Second, third. And there's Dyson in fourth behind them. What a race this is turning out Dyson to be. Dyson is within sight Yeah. Adam Andretti. Well, Dyson's last lap, a one, uh, sorry, a 206.3. And Adam Andretti, a 205.7. So he's still got some work to do, but he's right there. And Dreesy can see Ernie Francis now if he looks out front ahead of him. We haven't talked too much about Ernie, but uh, you know, he learned so much about him. He's such a humble character. He helped prepare all three breathless racing cars and pretty much uh, spanished them himself in the workshop. Uh, our, our crew went down to visit him and he was working around the clock for 10 days to go trying to fix all the cars together. So he is no prima donna at all, and I think that's why we love him so much. No, he's a racer's racer, like from the 60s, where the Trans Am racers would show up, haul the car themselves, work on it overnight. That's Ernie Francis Jr. He's always making setup changes to his car. And I think he's gonna be a, a walking ambassador for Trans Am. If young kids are watching and wanna go racing, or are carters, and they wanna say, well, what can I do next that I can afford and that will have, have me having fun. And this is it, Trans Am. Ernie Francis Jr. has turned it into seven titles. He's on his way to eight as he weaves his way through the traffic now. He's also going to be racing single-seaters in the FR, the Formula Regional oh. Championship. And now Andretti trying to get Just saw Ken traffic. Twaits in the pits. Ah. That stinks. Yeah, Tommy Dreesy having to deal with that back mark of traffic as well. Yeah, he's got a little too much torque sometimes with that second gear through there. Now he can use it. And here comes Ken. Yes, yeah, back out. Still in seventh. Ha! That's an amazing thing. You wouldn't have thought it, but he's done it. And now, has Andretti closed the gap? Maybe. Yes, I think he has. So after that little dalliance with the traffic, Adam Andretti's back on the rear bumper of the Lucas Mist. Tommy Dreesy car. Dyson's still there. Dyson just did a 202.169, his best lap of the race. So he was, what, six tenths quicker than Adam Andretti as they went through that traffic. So that's helped uh, Dyson, but yeah. of course Dyson's got to get through that traffic too. But he's only eight seconds behind Ernie Francis Jr. Here is, yeah, here is that traffic in front of him. As well. Yeah, his Ford is really sounding well. So Chris Dyson siding his way through. He chose to go to the back, and you yeah. explained to me in the previous race, but explain again for our fans why he did that. Well, well I went down. What happened. I talked to a crew member, and I asked, did he choose to start in the back? And I think he might have flat spotted some tires in the testing or qualifying. He did spin in so, qualifying. Yeah, yeah, so I think he did that, and he said, you know what? It's not going to be that bad because it's not a split start. Uh, you know, he's able to take advantage of it. And I never would have thought he'd be this close to the front this early without a double yellow, but here he is, ultra-talented Chris Dyson. There he comes. Out of the last corner, Chris Dyson in the plaid number 20, looking for glory here. He's currently in fourth position, but he's chasing down Andretti. Last time, Dyson did a 203.3 to Andretti's 202.8, but the times are varying a little bit because of the traffic. See for yourself, Greasy coming under the bridge now, up to third gear now. The number that matters to me is he just took three tenths of a second off of Ernie's time. Yeah. He's, you know, he's a little bit faster than the leader. Now, Ernie Francis, I want to tell everybody out there, if you just your first time joining us, 
he's probably the most calculating driver in the field. He likes to get up front and then just keep a gap. But this is not a comfortable gap for Ernie. Ernie likes to stay about a par five away from the. Yeah. This is not that. This is a stone's throw gap. Yeah, no quit kidding. And of course, Ernie Francis Jr. just turned 23 in January. Incredible when you consider that he's a seven time consecutive champion. And I'll say it again Michael Schumacher is a seven time world champion. Jimmy Johnson is a seven time NASCAR champion. But none of those are consecutive. Ernie Francis Jr. has done it in a row. Okay, they weren't all TA championships. He went for the lower ranks earlier, but he won every championship he's been in. Yeah, but he's 15, 16 years old. Right now, second, third, and fourth place are all running faster lap times than Ernie. Yeah, I, you know, I wonder if he's just, you know, sort of, I don't know, not holding back, but just uh, nursing it a little bit. Now, this is unlike Breathless and Ernie Francis. Something's going on. Yeah, I agree with you. Actually. He might be nursing some heat or there's something there. Yeah, like you say, Ernie likes to get himself a good 20 second, a par five. I like that. He likes to give himself that kind of lead. Future star racing and those colors that you see on that car will be the same colors he has on his formula car. And uh, I'm already calling him Ernie San because if he wins the FR championship, Honda will give him a scholarship to go and race in Japan. So Ernie San, let's hear it for him. He's also racing on CBS. Is Ernie? He'll be in the SRX Championship with Tony Stewart and many others. Ray Everingham, his good buddy, getting him a ride in that. As we go back with Tommy Dreesey, right there. Look how close yeah. they are. It's a completely different race now. It sure is. And Chris Dyson just picked up a second on our leader, Ernie Francis Jr. So top four reeling it in. And we're more than halfway through the race. Well, Tommy Dreesey has totally pulled him in here. And I, I'm, I'm trying to work out whether Tommy's doing good, or as you point out, uh, something, something's awry with Ernie Francis I think Jr. it could be both. Maybe, yep, combination of both. Down the Fangio straight they come, into turn 10. And Dyson, bit by bit, getting on level terms. More importantly, this battle between Dreesey and Lucas. Slick miss number eight. He's certainly got the time to have a go at Ernie Francis Jr. And it will change the complexion of the championship. Ernie came here last year, won the first race, and never really looked back. He had a few ups and downs, but it was never really in doubt. And I always feel that if you can command the first race of the season. Everybody knows where they stand and everybody then for is gunning for you, but you are favorite for every race thereafter. Yeah, yeah, I fully agree with that. Uh, we saw that 2019 Lawrence Loshak came yes, out first point. four races and did really well and really put Ernie to the ropes. And then unfortunately, Lawrence wasn't able to finish the season. But now I got to say, Tommy Dreesey's gone a whole lap without saying anything on the radio, so he is in the zone. God, Zooks. So look out. That's never happens. No, I think that's, that's – I mean, you might want to talk to Amy about writing a press release about that. Meanwhile, the Drone Works car in SGT still pedaling well. Let's have a look at Ken Thwaites here. Oh, oh. Got wheel lock. Yeah, Back. Wheel lock. And he goes off at the hairpin and gets it all together. But, uh, well – Good recovery from Ken Twain. Yeah, yeah. Still the experience, our current XGT champion. Yeah, wheel hop going into turn seven. That's a scary thing. Nice job, Ken, for the recovery. Igliotti in 13th position. Good to see him out there, even, because he had engine issues yesterday. Didn't make qualifying. Uh-oh. Just scraped in. Dreesy's made a huge gap on Andretti. And look at this. We're at lap traffic coming up to turn 10. I think Ernie's going to be able to put him between them. Yeah, no. No, no, no that's good. Good stuff. Davis is going. Right. Well, officially, the gap is, well, it says 0.8, but you can see it for yourself. It, it's vying between a second and 0.5, I would say, under braking. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I've just got word that in a few minutes, Thomas Merrill, who gave us that great show in TA2, is going to join us here in the booth to uh, give us his expertise in this racing. And right now, Thomas, if you're listening, this is becoming a great racing up front. We want to hear all about your race, but right now we need some expertise on what's going on. Tommy Dreesey closing in on the champion. 
what we're trying we've got Thomas right now. Yeah, Thomas, the winner of the free, uh, previous race, a brilliant race to start the season off. But Thomas, as we take a look at T Tommy Dreesey here, he's real Ernie Francis Jr. And we can't work out whether Ernie's got a problem or Tommy's just driving out of his skin. Yeah, this is an awesome race. This looks really, oh, here he goes for a move in 17. The track conditions right now are the slickest that they've been all weekend long. And I'm guessing Tommy's got a better car on a slick racetrack, so it looks like Ernie's kind of hanging on. He really is hanging on. This is the closest he's been. And let's have a look at the lap times as they cross the line. Tommy does a 2.037 to a 2.044 from Ernie. So there's no question in that last lap, another second, you can see the gap for yourself. It's absolutely nothing. You may even have a crack at him at turn three. Tommy's car just looks better. It just looks like it's tracking a little yeah. bit better than Ernie Francis. It and does. Uh, yeah, look how calm his hands are. He's just cruising. I think he's waiting for an opportunity here. Well, it, traffic could be a factor here, too. Look, he's been slowed down, is Ernie. And just not quite close enough for this overtake, perhaps, at the hairpin. Ernie's going to do the move and hope that uh, Tommy doesn't get through, but Tommy's going to go through. Okay. Wow, what a race. And if I put you in Tommy's seat, uh, Thomas, where would you where would you have a go? What 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 you well you're asking be? the wrong guy. The guy that just made a pass <laughs> and turned ten on yeah. the outside, where, where, which nobody's ever done. Th Thomas is like <laughs> I could pass renamed, anybody anywhere. We renamed ten Miracle Merrill yeah. corner. <laughs> I'll, I'll take it. That that sounds pretty good to me. I love, that rolls off the tongue. If if I was Tommy, I'd try to make the easiest move possible. Because like I said, it's really slippery out there, um, and, and he really just needs a strong corner exit and a nice easy move in a break zone somewhere. So I bet you coming off of turn 16 on the back stretch, he's gonna have a look. You know, I it was very interesting. Earlier in the weekend, I had Mike Skeen up here and I was like asking him about overtaking positions. And I said, can't really do an overtake at 10 because once you commit yourself, you're gonna get hung out to dry on the outside. He said, yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's just not worth trying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I, I, I don't know if I can take all the credit for that move because we were side by side coming in yeah, there and, and, and he's a strong, fair racer. So it looks like Tommy's got a little bit of a run here. Let's see what he does. Yep, here we go, down towards sunset. And Tommy jigged out for a moment, but Ernie's got the better of him, still, for now. Oh. Nice and on board with him. It just uh, The camera just locked up for a moment, but uh, he's still going well. Dyson is really strong through 17. He's just holding the steering wheel. It's been really fast as we overtake here. Oh, here, here we go. go, Tommy Treacy for the lead. Oh, side by side, beat one. Oh. And here he comes back, switches back, turn three. Can he go for the inside move? We're all breathless, never mind Ernie Francis' team. Oh, you can see it, look, Ernie's, Ernie's fighting the back end of that car. He's just having a hard time putting the power down. I think this is a matter of time here. Yeah, I think you're right, actually. Yeah, Ernie's struggling, isn't he? We just heard Tommy Dreesey there. Getting pretty hot on the radio. What was he saying? Anybody coming? Anybody coming? I oh, think okay. uh, I think there's a yellow flag at 17, so I think he, he saw that and might think that there might be a uh, full course. Okay, but well, Dyson's still going along. And, and Thomas, just to give you a, an insight, uh, Chris Dyson started at the back because he went for new tires because there wasn't a uh, effectively a, a, a staggered start to this. He took a gamble and he came through. Amazingly, he got right to uh, about seventh place after the first lap, and now he's flying for the podium. That's impressive. Those new tires are going to come in handy in these conditions, no too. No kidding. And you can see that early Francis Jr. is struggling a little bit. I don't know, what, would you say it's tires or just setup that goes off? I would, I, right now it's track conditions. Like I said, yeah. it was, I, I would thought I was going slow out there in our race, and everyone else was struggling as much as I was. And you can really see Ernie. Ernie's issue seems to be isolated to the rear end of the car. He's he's really wheeling that thing. He's doing a heck of a job leading this race yeah. with a hard time putting the power down. So yeah, you can yeah, see look it at there, him. Oh. He's really struggling. Yeah, that, that kid's talented though. That's that's fun to watch. How do you think you'll go on single seaters? Because that's a whole different ball game. Uh oh, Formula it is. Three. Oh, Dreesy wants him at yeah. one. It looks like. Yeah. Let's see what he does here. He winds himself up, coming through sunset, goes through the hit, bounces over the It curb. does look like Dreesy's car has a better setup, though. Yeah, he's he's definitely got better side bite through the corners. He can roll the speed. He can get a good exit. Well, Ernie up the pace then, a 203.6 to a 204.0. So four tenths quicker last time out was Ernie Francis Jr. This is a good race right here in SGT with Aaron Pierce. 
two yellow Corvettes. Love seeing yellow Corvettes at Sebring. Well, Early doing everything he can to try to stay ahead of this race and win at home in Florida. Dreesy! Uh -oh. oh, Tommy, Tommy! And we'll sure get some radio from I'm gonna that. Put I'm, the sure. yellow, I'm gonna put the radio up to my microphone, see what he's saying. You know, it's Road America all over again, isn't it? Sure is. Oh, uh -oh. don't come out yet. Yeah. Did you hear that? He yep. says, sorry guys, sorry guys, I got distracted by the radio. How many laps to go? Yep, and he spun out and uh, he's got it back going again, but that's pretty much gifted Ernie Francis Jr. who will take a breathless breath now because after all of that pressure, and not dealing very well with the car setup, or at least the car not being as good as he'd like. He's got a little bit of a reprieve there because Tommy Dreesey hasn't lost a position, but he's lost a lot of track time too. Sure has. Early Francis. Jr. Thomas Merrill, how happy are you that we didn't have your radio here first lap of that last race? <laughs> yeah, you, you didn't want to hear what, what I had to say. Can I quickly sure. get a, a synopsis there? What happened? Uh, you know, it's it's. Um, all I know is I was three wide in the middle trying to stay out of the way, and then I got hit from behind pretty Replay. hard there in turn three. Okay, here we go. Overcooked it right there in the S's, right we, in front of the bridge. You know, that was, was going to happen earlier because I kept saying, why is he in second gear? And he was getting a lot of torque coming out of there uh, and just getting a little bit uh, squarely, and uh, it's come to naught. He spun it round, and, yeah, what a shame. That's an easy mistake to make there. Yeah. Turn five is the slipperiest corner on the racetrack. Yeah, it's, it's really easy to uh, analyze from here, let me tell you. Yeah. <laughs> Look at For that. Sure. Ernie Francis Jr. has Chris Dyson 2.876 seconds behind him. Come on, Chris. That would be superb. All right, so hopefully we can stay here for a little bit. Narrate us around this track. I got to figure out where he is. <laughs> okay, he's coming out turn five. Three. So this is the corner that... That and you can could, you could see Chris is fighting the back end of the car there. It's really hard to put the power down coming off of turn five. You get to relax a little bit here before turn seven, but then it's a really hard, as deep as you can on the brakes, get your clean downshifts in, and try not to overcook this corner. It's easy yeah, to do. How much trouble are you in if you do go to the dirt here? I saw you do it one time, and you managed to hold on, hold the line. I did. I just kept my foot planted and kind of prayed for grip, and, and it came, it unfortunately. Came. Yeah. I thought you were done. I thought, oh, he's gone wide, but no. You managed to keep your foot in. And that's what led to the overtake. Yeah, yeah, it worked out, fortunately. It doesn't always. <laughs> that's racing, folks. Seven laps to go in this, our first race of 2021. We've had a fantastic TA2 race, and we're having another doozy here in TA. Scale of 1 to 10 in your incident in the TA2 race at turn three, where was your angry meter? Uh, well, I, I'll, I'll be perfectly honest and say my fear meter was at a 10 when I got hit because I hadn't gone to the brakes yet. I was, yeah. I was doing oh, wow. a pretty good clip. And I, and I was sliding through the grass sideways. Here's I, a look. Oh, oh there you go. Oh, See, that, that's an easy it. mistake to make yeah. down there in turn seven. But that's exactly the same mistake he made in qualifying, and that's why he chose to take the new tires. That was a good save, though. That was, <laughs> a, was a good save. <laughs> that was a good save. <laughs> well, we saw his sponsors there nicely. Though. Yeah, there you go. Uh-oh. Oh, something Aaron else. Aaron Pierce, it looks like, yeah. went off there. Yeah. Turn five. So there may be dirt on the track, too. Not only is that a really slick surface. So we're getting into the business end of this, our first TA, SGT, and GT race of the year. There's a first look at Lou Gigliotti, who uh, had engine problems in the 28 in practice, but managed to get back out despite missing qualifying. Yeah, Lou Gilotti, a longtime Trans Am racer. Good to have him back with us. What's happening here? That's Adam Andretti's uh, wife, Tabitha, right there. Yeah. Looking at times, they have a little look of panic on their faces, <laughs> if you ask me. So something must be going on. But I think Adam Andretti's comfortably on making podium right now. But uh, Tommy Dreesey's on a tear. He's, he's got that Thomas Merrill anger in him right now. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Jeff Hinkle is the man we were looking at for a moment there in the number nine. He's currently circulating in 13. Yeah, you can see that dirt building up on the exit of uh, the hairpin there. But like you say, straight line it, you could just about hold it, and you proved it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah you can. Dreesy on the inside of, outside of Lou Gelati coming into 10. 10 is a corner that people don't really talk too much about, but it's a corner that you can really get things wrong. 
It is. It's difficult. The brake zone does not have a lot of grip, and you've got to compromise the exit because you're going through that fast left-hand sweeper. Right. And it's difficult to hold the throttle down all the way through. Yeah, it's a really good point. So Oaks and Saunders continue their battle in SGT. They are eighth and ninth at the moment. Oaks has the advantage over our champion Saunders. There's Ken Twaits in his first ever TA race. Oh no! Oh no! That's the number nine, I think, of Hinkle. Jeff Hinkle parks it, but gets it going again. Simon Gregg's back out. It's good to see. Yeah, and... Look at Dyson and Ernie right there yes. in one shot. Look, they're all in the same shot now. Sometimes it can be deceptive when you look down the long straight like that. Let's see who this red car is. I think That's it's Hinkle. Jeff Hinkle. It yeah. is Hinkle, yeah. There you go. So, he's up and running again. A lot of people going off at 16. Is that yeah. happening a lot? Well, the, the exit in 16 is super important, so you're just trying to get the throttle down as quick as okay. you can, and, and sometimes you run out of grip, particularly on a day like today, and it's not easy. Fair enough. So, we're getting into just a matter of laps now in this race. Ernie Francis has led all the way, but it was nip and tuck until Dreesy made a mistake and spun the car. And he's back and running, still in fourth place, but he'll be kicking himself for sure. And if he can get a podium out of this, he'll be much happier for the day. There's a good shot of Steven Davison and that Aston Martin, who is currently 14th place. I was just saying, Thomas, you know, the impetus of winning the first race of the year for Ernie, you know, it's ominous when, when, when especially with what his career has done, if he wins this race, which he's likely to do, uh, you know, it, it really does put everybody else on the back foot. Here he goes again. It's just a, it's a, it's a thing in your head. Everybody knows you know, on their day they can beat Ernie, but it just sort of says he's, he's going for it again. Oh, it's a huge mental victory, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it, Dyson's a heck of a racer, and, and so is Adam Andretti. But, yeah, when you see uh, Ernie disappear into the distance, it can be pretty discouraging. Well, Ben asked him the classic question at the start. He says, everybody says now you've got three championships, you're going to be distracted. And Ernie just looked at him like, what? <laughs> well, Thomas, says, well, Thomas, we'll see what happens. Thomas gets all my awkward questions, too. I like to just really dig in deep and almost hurt their feelings when I ask questions. And <laughs> So yeah, he you're, understands you're pretty that. Good at that. You brought up last year's turn three incident, didn't you? Yeah. yeah. But we, I'm not going to. I'm going to go back to this race. <laughs> but we're still friends. It's a good thing it was a year ago. I had a year to <laughs> yeah, exactly. cover it. And, yeah. how, how did therapy go? Uh, therapy was great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I wouldn't have gone to Ben for my therapy, though. But, you know, um, you never count Thomas Merrill out. He started at the back of the pack 2019 at Laguna Seca, worked his way all the way to the front to win the race. So we've seen him do it before. And now he's done it at two of the most difficult tracks. Richard Grant trying to hold off Oaks at the moment. Justin Oaks uh, leading the way at the moment in SGT. And he can't seem to get past the number 30. Good to see Turan back out there. As that's Dreesy. And Dreesy still somehow quiet on the radio. <laughs> that's a... Oh, big picture, big picture. Yep. Finish the race well, that's from good Terry to hear. St. Martin. Yep, good to hear. Yep. Big picture, going for the championship is what he means. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and I think that was uh, certainly the attitude of a few drivers in TA2 because it's going to be a long, long, hard season. Yep. Uh, but if we get the racing like we did in that last race, it's going to be cracking. Five laps to go, ladies and gentlemen. Ernie Francis Jr. is still out front, 203.8. He's still circling. His best lap at 202.5. That was, though, right early in the race. 15, watch on. Almost praying. I think, yeah, I think we just saw Ernie Sr. maybe lifting one up right there. Chris Dyson, Dyson by Simon Gray. Wave. His onboard is so great. You can see that Chris is fighting the back end of the car a little. I keep trying to draw people's attention to the bottom left because you get to really see the driver working. You know? yeah. Oil on the track right there at Bishop's Bend. Some debris on the track. I saw a debris flag. Yeah, he's, he's tiptoeing. You see that, yeah. that, that yellow bar on the left is his throttle input. You can see how gingerly that bar is going up and down, and it's not going to 100% very often. He's having to tiptoe around. It'll go 100% here. Hopefully, we can stay with him through 17. Yeah, debris or oil on the track is never a good sign, especially at some of the most crazy turns. 
That's a pretty car, though. Yeah, Chris Dyson's had those plaid colors uh, for a while. They're paint manufacturers, as well as do-it-yourself uh, pieces. Yep. And a uh, big company. And they've certainly got a lot of coverage Woo. from Chris over the years. Look at that gap. It's both really good. Mice he looks good. Both racing mice and chassis, mind you. So these are pretty equally yoked cars. Yep. Both Fords, both mice and chassis. Very good friends off the track. So they even give each other speed secrets. We'll see what happens here. Yeah, and Dice were almost uh, under, just under a second quicker than Ernie on that last lap. So this is uh, turning into a cracking race. Andretti going for the podium. Dreesy going for the points as his team has just told him, calm it down, let's just get the points. The championship is more important. It's early days. Yeah, he's in fourth place. That's a lot of points for what happened there. That could have been catastrophic. He did a good job saving it. Uh, now that Sebring has widened that bridge, uh, he was able to stay out of the wall. I think the old bridge, he might have hit the wall right there. For SGT fans, Justin Oates continues to lead ahead of our champion, Lee Saunders, in third place in SGT, Michael Phillips. He's an eighth overall, too. That's really impressive. Seventh overall now is Justin Oakes. Nice job, Justin. Yeah. Well, we've had everything today. There he is. That's a pretty car. How bad was the wind out there for you, and how does it affect the car? Because we've, just, we've been talking about how breezy it is, especially coming down the straight. Well, the, the wind here is huge, especially from session to session. It changes direction. So sometimes you can break super late in turn one like we could in the race today, and sometimes it's a tailwind. Right. And you go for the same brake zone, you're like, you're thinking, oh, no, I'm in the wall. <laughs> yep. Point. Here comes Ken. Can't miss him, can you? Those two Mustangs up front are really close right now. Yep. Yeah. It's going to be a good finish, this. Lap 24, here comes the Mega Nichols 23 of Amy Ruman. Two-time TA champion, Amy Ruman. Yep. Had some good runs last year, but uh, by her standards, I would say a disappointing year for her. And here is Dyson. You can see the gap yourself. It's 0.7 officially, but now it looks closer from the camera's position. Flames. Pouring out the Dyson's side of the getting 20. on the brakes a little bit later than Ernie. He is. He does look stronger on the brake pedal. Oof. Oh, inside. Thought it's about Tom's it. favorite corner. <laughs> <laughs> I just keep hurting his feelings. Sorry, Turn Thomas. 10 is his favorite. Look sword. at how wide he is there. We had a little interruption here, but hopefully we'll get back to the live shot. Hey, side oh, by this side. is it for the overtake, and Chris Dyson takes the lead of the race. Over Ernie Francis Jr. Will Ernie come back as they dive towards the hairpin? But the, oh, oh no! no. Oh, and he stopped Ernie. I can't tell Ernie's if there through. was. I can't tell if there was contact. No, there was no contact. But that was. Uh, well, he started he's back up. <laughs> Drama indeed. Wait, what was all the dust? Yeah, was that Twaits? Ernie, Ernie had to drive off the tr racetrack. Oh, okay. oh yeah. We're still battling here. And there's dust on Ernie's tires. This is not over. Well, I thought Shakespeare wrote good drama, but John Claggett's a close second. Excellent script yeah. for today. Thank you, John. Let's see, Chris Dyson, tower turn here. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Dyson's car looks better. It does. This is going to come did, down to the last how corner. How did he catch up so quickly? He was able to start oh, that thing right Oh, because Ernie had up. to go wide. Right, OK. Yeah. Wow, what a race. These two are putting on a, a great show for us. And it's not over. Debris flag is gone there too. That's a good sign. Well, both of their car, both of their cars look as though their tires are spent. Yeah, the drivers are spent too. It's yeah. hot out there. They're <laughs> they're sweating. Yeah, this yeah, is not the way you stay want to stay on board here. here. Because last time we were on board, watching Chris's hands through 17, he's so smooth. Yep. And here we go into Sunset Bend again. The pair of them glued together. The 98 and the 20 been this way so many times at TA, but usually Dyson is used to taking the runner-up spot, and maybe he's got fed up of that. He's had some great wins. His run at Road Atlanta last year was superb, and look how close he is now. Surely, uh, Thomas, a run at three for him? Uh, I think he's too far back for turn okay. three, but if I was Chris, I, I would know that Ernie is having a hard time putting the power down, so yeah. he's going to get a good run off of turn five and try to make that move again. Just, just got word from race director, though, that they're looking into the uh, spin at turn seven between 20 and 98. That's Dyson and Ernie Francis, and we got the uh, For impeding Ernie, right? white flag next time by. 
And that would be, I'm guessing, no, impeding Ernie, just, right? Uh, no, I think they're going to look for contact or anything like that. Okay. I don't think anything's going to come of but it could, personally. You, couldn't you claim if you were breathless that he was impeded and had to go off the racetrack and he wouldn't have had to? I would if I were them, but but it, for, for me, that was just Chris uh, making an error and Ernie really had nowhere to go. Yeah, fair enough. So into the Merrill corner they come. I like that name a lot. <laughs> and aren't you glad it's not turn three? <laughs> right. <laughs> There's no winning with this guy. Uh, there is, I'm <laughs> no. sorry. But, no. you know, you, I know that you are one of the most talented drivers in the series or in the world, and we just give you a hard time. And that time, th today, was not your fault by any means. No. Here we go. What's he going to do here, Thomas? Yeah, let's put you in the seat. You know, so so if I'm Chris Dyson right now, I'm thinking, okay, I need a good exit out of 16, so I'm not going to overdrive this. I'm not going to use too much curbing. I'm going to try to be smooth on the throttle, mm -hmm. spot your exit. Ernie goes a little bit wide there. Oh, here we go. Does he have a run? Yeah, you're right. He got good drive there. This is as close as he's been. Yeah, he's going to stay. In, run. He's going to stay in the slipstream here, and he's going to take a peek. I don't know if he's close enough. Don't think he is. Ernie's got the better of him. He breaks late. Into sunset, and he's going to have to go it on the last lap now. And I'll put you back in that seat now. What do you do? White flag. Man, er Ernie is driving really hard. He got a great exit out of 17, considering the grip that he's fighting for. Ooh. So Chris just needs to occupy those mirrors and try to distract him as much as possible. There he, is. Here he, he comes. Goes. Turn one, and back into the lead goes Chris Dyson. Now can he hold touch, it? Touch. Oh. Oh. That might have been a little touch. Wow. What a race. These are really good friends that love and respect each other in equally yoked cars on the last lap. It doesn't get any better than this, than except for maybe the last TA2 race we just watched. Under the bridge for the last time then. This is the final lap of TA. Let's take a look at what happened. And Thomas, you call it. So Chris just dives into the inside, but he does a really good job on the brake pedal, and he's got to hang on to the brake longer than normal, and that's why Ernie gets into the I back see. of him in the center, because he had to gather that thing up. He did a great job. That's really interesting, because you're right. It didn't seem to make sense at the time, but now you explain it does. So where and when can he make the move? Can Ernie come back at him, do you think? Oh, I think so. Ernie Ernie won't lay down for that. He'll, he'll, he'll drive to the end of this race. All right, 17, here we go. just like the last race. It's going to be another last corner dash. Merrill-esque. And you can see both of them are struggling. You can hear both of them are struggling. And the teams are struggling to hold team. it all together. Dyson's team watching on. The Breathless team doing the same. Time running out, though. Just a few corners to go in the first race from Sebring. Dyson got the lead. And he's now heading towards the final few corners of this race. Hanging on for dear life. Now, can Ernie come back at him? That's the question. I'm going to turn it over to Thomas. That was a great exit from Chris. He was checking his mirrors a lot on the last straightaway. Now he's got his eyes focused forward. I think he's got enough room here. I think he has. I don't think uh, Ernie can do anything. And here comes the plaid number 20 of Chris Dyson, who has totally swept up this race in the end to take victory here. A famous victory for Chris Dyson and his team. What a win. That turns out to be what a decision to do on new tires and start from the back, and it's paid off. Despite the fact that we had no safety, he still did it, and that is going to go down in his books as one of his best. Adam Andretti, third place, and another last to first race here at Sebring International Raceway with the Sebring Speed Tour. Thomas, what do you think? Give us your critique on this one. That was really, really impressive. In particular, Chris's recovery from the mistake he made in turn seven. He shook it off and kept his focus. That was really, really impressive. Tommy Dreesey will be a little upset to finish fourth, but uh, he was in it. And in SGT, good race for Justin Oaks. He wins in that battle over Lee Saunders. Ben's going to head down to part firm eight. And my thanks also to Thomas Merrill, who is going to go and get a free massage from, I don't know, but he deserves one after his great day's work. I'm going to rename Turn 10 after him. And we're going to celebrate what has been a fantastic Trans Am weekend of racing. Thank you, Thomas. Thank you, Ben. And we'll just wind this one down and catch our breath. The checkered flag is exhausted, as are we. But that was top draw. Doesn't get any better than that. There's your winner of SGT, the Drone Works man. 
But our hats off to our drone work and our camera work for all of those representing Greenlight Television. Excellent job, guys, as always. But a win for Chris Dyson. And like I said, psychologically, that's really, really going to open up this championship. And I know that sounds odd to say in the first round of a championship, but Ernie Francis Jr., remember, has won seven titles in a row. Not all in TA, I may add, but... Uh, Time to chill for Chris Dyson. And it's time for us to chill out and give you our quantum cooler chill out moment. And it has to be this. And look at this move. Fantastic time for Chris Dyson and Ernie Francis Jr. They went wheel to wheel. Chris Dyson, well, I think we might just get a smile from Chris today. He's a very serious, furrow-browed fella. But today, I think it's going to be all smiles. Brilliant stuff by him. And that was a top draw drive. His father raced, and he race, races in many a different series. And he's also a good coach. But Chris Dyson, what a performance here at Sebring. And we really have had two top draw Trans Am races to start off our 2021 season. That's all we could have asked for. Brilliant win for Thomas Merrill and a great win for Chris Dyson. Two of the stalwarts of the series. Great efforts by Ernie Francis Jr. and of course by Tommy Dreesey and many others. And a quick check on the results and confirmation of the plaid. Number 20, Ford Mustang of Chris Dyson with a Mustang 1-2. Ernie Francis Jr. led for so long in the Breathless Pro Racing team, but in the end finished second. But they have good friends, those two. They'll enjoy it. Adam Andretti on the podium, and that's a good result for him as well in that challenger. Tommy Teresi in the end in fourth place. Justin Marks fifth. Amy Ruman sixth in the Corvette. Justin Oakes in SGT wins in his seventh overall. Richard Grant is eighth, second in SGT Lee Saunders. Our champion, Ken Twaits, gets into the top ten. He'll be pleased with that. Uh, his first race in TA, Jeff Hinkle behind him. Michael Phillips, Lou Gigliotti in a 13th place. Stephen Davison, Griffin, De Pippo wins in GT. Oscar Terran came in and out of the pits, but Aaron Pierce likewise, Bochum and Candarella. Simon Gregg, sadly, did not finish, and nor did David Pintaric. <laughs> Chris Dyson still revving the car. So looking forward to him getting out. But that was a really determined race. You know, 75 minutes, I'm on, I'm over on. an hour. That absolute pace is absolutely incredible. I think we'll see a sigh of relief. Hey, look out, here guys. Tony, watch out. No, 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 over here, over here. Philip, over here if you can. There you yeah. go. <laughs> yeah. I think that meant something, don't you? Yeah. You come over here and So, Chris Dyson celebrating. In a moment, we'll get that helmet off. And uh, we'll get some photos. And Ben's rushed down there already. And uh, he's reached across to get his mask, I think. Let's head down. And as the helmet comes off, join Ben Sissel down in Victory Lane. Let him get a drink of, let him get a drink of water before he do the interview. Wow. I'm going to talk over this, Tony. You can get him shot of while he puts a mask on and gets a drink. That was absolutely incredible racing from Chris Dyson all the way from last, came down to the last lap, both in Ford Mustangs, both Mice and Chassis, both really close friends that love and respect each other. 
But man, unbelievable display of talent there from Chris Dyson and Ernie Francis Jr. Chris, you've got to be so excited. And what a move to change tires, go start from the back. It really paid off. Well, to be honest, we didn't have much of a choice after yesterday. You know, we got it wrong coming in and uh, I made a mistake and thought I could make it work in qualifying and we ended up flat spotting two uh, nice sets of two nice uh, Pirelli tires. And the guys just said, no, there's no way we can run it. So we were fourth. So we figured, you know, it might be slick today. We'll take the risk, go to the back. I was hoping for a yellow. It never came. So I just had to drive, drive my head off. And, uh, you know, coming down to the fight with Ernie, you know, that's what we race here for. I think he and I both here come here and we, we, we use each other as a benchmark. And uh, I about used them up. And I think that was uh, vice versa there down in one. But uh, good Lord was looking down on us today. I'm so, I'm so blessed to be here and uh, been down here a week, miss my family, love you guys, and uh, just happy to bring a win home. What a great way to start the year. Nice. Exactly, what a great way to start the year. How did you collect yourself? You were coming up to Ernie, you were like lap after lap, you were getting them, and then that happened to turn seven late in the race. How'd you collect yourself and get it back? So I wasn't expecting him necessarily to go wide where he did, so I passed him on the outside coming out of the carousel, and then we were heading down to the uh, to the hairpin, and we've been having trouble there. I gotta look at the, like, I gotta look at, uh, the way we're, we're set up because the down changes were a little bit clunky, and we made some changes there, and I think that uh, caught me out a little bit. I was a little bit offline, going a little bit quicker. You know, you're pushing, but uh, thankfully he didn't hit me and uh, we were able to carry on uh, racing, racing through the dirt. And, uh, you know, as it came out, we had one more shot to make it happen. And uh, I dummied him down the right. He went for it and I went down the inside and uh, tried to move me a little bit, but uh, we were able to hold it down. Nice. Chris Dyson. Hey, listen, unbelievable display of talent. Great job, man. So proud of you. Good stuff. We're going to come to Philip. The Pippa Phillip, you'll put that on real quick. But hey, Tony, let's let's do something special here if you don't mind. Hey, Wayne, can I ask you a question? Hey, bro. So this is the president of Sebring International Raceway. We're so happy to be here. We're so happy to and excited to start our season here. But you as a Trans Am fan, does it get any better than that? Oh man, the, both of these races today were spectacular. But this show today, I would so much rather watch this than like anything else. These two cars battling it out over so many laps have a little drama there with three to go and then come. This was spectacular. Nice. Great words from Wayne. Thank you so much. Great racetrack, great facility. Thanks for having us here. Thanks, Tony. We're going to come around the Dyson team. They're so excited. Dude, Look at this. Drive. Did you run that final? Car? What a drive. <laughs> it we, was, I'm so glad you're back, dude. We lost the ignition box. You did? We default with come you. on back. Man. I want, I want All right, I'm going to come over here. Here's the champ, Ernie Francis Jr. coming in after a great race. Where did Philip go? Here he is. Here's Philip. Philip in this beautiful number 94 car. Philip, man, what a great showing. I know you've raced with us in TA2. How does it feel to win in the GT class? This was much more difficult because I had to race against me, myself, and I. Yeah. So that made it a lot tougher. How hard is it to race in these mixed class races and just keep constantly looking in your mirror like that? I mean, that's the thing. You got to be aware of it and you got to be respectful and let the guys, and you talk to them beforehand, you tell them, you know, obviously you give them a, a strict point fight so they know where they're going. But I got to thank Sasco Sports and I got to thank Dave, uh, Dan and the team and Will and uh, those guys for really giving me a great car to drive. Nice job. Philip, proud of you. We need, more, we need more T3 and T2 guys out here. It's a lot of fun. Come out and play. More T2 and T3 cars. Rob and Dave Handy, hope you were watching that. Good job, Philip. And then I'm looking for Justin Oaks, our SGT winner. Right there he is. Justin? Justin Oaks, you got a mask? Hey, Justin, you got a mask? We're going to come out here, look at this beautiful car while he puts on a mask. The drone works, G Speed. Great racing with Lee Saunders. Lee, nice job out there. But Justin, Great start to your championship Thank run, you. buddy. Thank you. Yeah, it was so much fun. I mean, I had a great time. Me and Lee had it all had it going back and forth in the beginning. It was it was a great race. The team built an amazing car as as they ever always do. It performed perfectly. I just gotta say thanks obviously to the crew and team and for everybody that makes this possible, but mainly to my wife who Honey, you're at home watching. Thank you so much. I love you. Thanks for letting me come race while you're pregnant at home, seven, eight months pregnant. So. Nice, I love it. Yeah, Can't yeah. wait to meet Jackson. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. So here we're going to do something kind of crazy. I'm going to show you the camaraderie in the Trans Am paddock. Hey, Chris, Adam, Ernie, let me get you guys together. Yeah. Where's Ernie? We will. I want to display the, uh, hey, Ernie, I want to display the camaraderie in our Trans Am pit. Here's the top three, and these guys love and respect each other. Ernie, how crazy was that? And then I want you to take the mic and interview these drivers. <laughs> yeah, uh, so trying to catch my breath after that one. 
Uh, really a hard fought race, uh, battle till the end. I uh, thought we had a pretty big lead at the beginning and then uh, ran into some lap traffic. Uh, some of the guys were able to catch back up to us and uh, really had to work the car pretty hard to try and stay out in front. And I think I just burned off my equipment today and, uh, and was struggling towards the end. Chris was really fast at the end of the race. Uh, we almost got together a few times, especially in uh, turn seven. But uh, yeah, he did a great job and uh, just had a little bit more than us today. Um, I don't even know. Cover border, dude. Yeah, how was, uh, how was your race out there? I didn't see much of you. Oh, <laughs> thanks, Ernie. Behind. Take the mic Also, oh, so, so here, here's the dig from the champ. You know, he didn't see much of me except in his mirror. Um, the reason for that was we uh, had an ignition box go hiccup on us uh, right there at the, you know, probably about a third of the way through the race. So uh, that, uh, at that point, it became nursing it to make sure we could bring it home. Um, you know, I knew Chris was coming up fast, you know, through the radio communication with the driver. And, but uh, we got, uh, made sure that Chris got through us pretty clean and easy because I, I wasn't going to race him for a position because we didn't have the motor or anything to do so. So what a hands-off job to him. He didn't even start, he started at the tail. Like, I'm not even talking like the tail of TA. He started at the tail. And I was, and I was thinking to myself, when before the race started, I was like, you know, the only way we'll see Chris is if there's a full course caution. And at Sebring, that's a pretty good chance. But I'll be darned if you didn't get that full course caution. And I looked in my mirror and I saw that 20 plaid car absolutely coming. You were hooked up on a rail, buddy. Thanks, bro. I'm just so glad you're back here. Love you, love your family. And uh, it's great having you guys in the series. I mean, what a battle. Uh, I can't wait for the next one. Me neither, you know, and hopefully we could got our stuff together and uh, we knocked the rust off after a year not being here with you. And, We'll come race door to door with you next time. I, I just got to say thanks to not only the series, but uh, to, to my friends at Altwell CBD for coming on board with the in-car camera. I hope we put on a great show for you guys. I love you, Greg, and everybody on the West Coast. Looking forward to the next one. Nice. True professional right there. I'm going to hand it back to this professional, Mr. Ben Sizzle. Adam and Reddy, what an honor. Chris Dyson, nice job. I love it. That's the camaraderie here in the Trans Am series presented by Pirelli. What another great race in the TA SGT GT class. Everybody seems to have a great time today here. We will see you again at Michelin Raceway Road Atlanta in just about a month. Thank you so much for joining us. Johnny, I'm sending it back to you, buddy. Thanks, Ben. Excellent stuff. He doesn't mind who does the interviewing. That's the love of Ben Sissel and his love for the championship. Great words from Adam Andretti. Doesn't get much better. What a race. What a weekend.